Chandler Halderson did not murder his parents. He is not guilty of those crimes. Chandler Halderson is 23 years old, young man. He likes to play video games, play with his dogs, hang out with his girlfriend, and he lived peacefully in his parents' home. He was just a normal kid. He is a normal kid. So what did happen? What happened to the Haldersons? What happened in that Haldersons' home? Remember those questions. They won't be answered at the end of this trial. Remember those questions at the end of this trial when you have to decide whether the state has proven to you that Chandra Halderson killed his parents because they simply don't know what happened. They just told you what they think happened. We heard a lot of detail of the before and a lot of detail of the after. But a one or two simple sentences, and then he killed his parents. The evidence will show you that there is a gap of evidence when it comes to that time frame. And your job is to listen to this evidence as jurors. Listen to the evidence from the perspective of a juror, not from the perspective of a story corroborator corroborating the state's story. The role of being a juror is a different role than being a person. And that may sound strange, but it is. I think of when I went to law school way back in 1991, and there's a big part of me that feels I went into law school a human being, who lived my life feeling things emotionally and relating to things emotionally. And I left law school a really different person. I learned how to be very logical, to apply facts, first to assemble facts, and then to apply these facts to the law as I learned it. Facts, laws, and rules, plus logic. That's your role here as a juror. Don't assume anything. Assumption is the mother of all mistakes. The story that you just heard assumes that Chandler Halderson killed his parents. You cannot assume anything. Your job is to presume, presumption, presume that Chandler Halderson is innocent because he, today, is under the benefit of the presumption of innocence. An assumption is reaching a conclusion without knowing all the information. A presumption is a principle that we all must follow. We must presume him innocent, and we must keep that presumption unless and until the state proves every element of every charge beyond a reasonable doubt. That's not easy. It's not easy in a high profile case. It's not easy in a case where we all know we're going to see evidence that is disturbing. But you must find a way, like I did in law school, to put your emotions, put your feelings aside, and use the logical part of who you are. Be a juror. Assemble the facts, know the law, and apply the logic 
without letting your feelings or emotions get in the way. And for each of you, you might have a different way of doing that. But I'm asking you here today to dig deep and find out how that will work for you so that you can presume my client innocent. Now, I'm not going to have a fancy PowerPoint here, and I'm probably not even going to talk very much longer. But as I comment to you on the evidence that you're going to see in this case, I want to highlight a couple of things. First of all, and the judge already indicated this in some of the preliminary instructions, Lack of evidence is evidence just as much as any evidence that is presented to you in the courtroom. Look for what's missing. Look for alternate explanations. Because the second thing I want to tell you is that evidence of one thing is not necessarily evidence of another thing. This one fact here could mean a different fact here, but it also could mean three or four other facts. So you have to avoid jumping to conclusions and really dig deep and look at what this all means. You're going to notice that many of the facts, many of the witnesses, aren't going to be hotly contested by the defense in this case. And that goes back to what I was just saying. 12, 18, 100 reasonable people can look at a certain situation and form a different conclusion. And when you're talking about a system where you need to be convinced beyond a reasonable doubt, um, you better make very sure that you're excluding all of the other things um, that these facts could mean. Because you just aren't going to know what happened. You're going to know some about the before. You're going to know some about the after. But you're not going to know what happened in the Halderson's home who did it, what happened, how it went down, whether it was intentional or not, which is an element of homicide, you're just not going to know. You're also going to not know how Bart and Krista would have reacted to these lies. That's never going to be explained to you why lying turns into murder or how lying turns into murder. Be sure to look for what you're not told because that's evidence just as much as any evidence is. I'm going to ask you to resist some things in this case as jurors. We already talked a little bit about proof beyond a reasonable doubt. What that means is you must resist guessing. You must resist speculation. You must resist storytelling. And only convict when, you're, when it's proven, or if it's proven, which it won't be, beyond a reasonable doubt. I'm going to ask you to resist losing your objectivity. Ob objectivity may be hard for people in this case because of the graphic nature of what you've just been told or what you're going to see. But you need to resist losing that objectivity. Commit to being jurors, dispassionate, logical. Don't be swayed by fear. 
And I ask you to resist any pressure you might feel to convict Mr. Halderson of murder in this case. It's a little unorthodox, but I'm gonna tell you, at the end of this case, Attorney Vera and I may stand before you here and say, you know what? They did convict him of this, but what evidence do you have of murder? to talk about the Constitution, probably because I'm a defense lawyer, but I think as jurors, as people coming into the system uh, who aren't dealing with this every day, like we are here in the courtroom, you have to remember how important the Constitution is, how important the presumption of innocence is for Mr. Halderson, and how important proof beyond a reasonable doubt is. It's the highest standard we have. And it was created and perseveres to this day for this very reason. When someone is on trial for a very, the most serious crime possible, and every little thing they do every little lie they might have told is blown up and thrown against someone. That's when proof beyond a reasonable doubt matters. You jurors, not the Sheriff's Department, not Mr. Brown or Ms. Raymond or me or the judge get to decide this case. Individually, you all get a vote. You all get to make your own decision. I simply ask that you remember your role as jurors, that you find a way to stay objective, that you look for the key questions, the key facts that aren't answered, and that you hold the government to this high burden of proof. If you do those things, if you can resist these things, you will reach the right conclusion. Chandler Halderson did not murder his parents. <laughs>